Hello, everybody. Welcome to the CASDA Virtual College Fair powered by StriveScan. Thank you all so much for being here. My name is Sabelle Rasim. I am your facilitator for this evening. So we have some amazing institutions here to really uh, you know, teach you all about themselves. And, and they have some absolutely amazing information to share with you all. Um, and as time, and as we know, time flies when you're having a good time. So we're gonna have a great time this evening uh, for our last session of the night. But before we get started, there are just a few things that I want to mention, just some housekeeping items, just to make this even more fun and efficient. First and foremost, we absolutely encourage questions. Please ask questions. But the way you will do so is by clicking on that Q&A button in your Zoom toolbar and type in those questions to the presenters at any time. I stress, at any time. Do not wait until the last minute. And you also don't even have to wait for the institution that you're asking the question for to actually present. You're more than welcome to ask it at any point in time. So please make sure that you go ahead and do that. I'm super sorry, I have a fire truck uh, next to me. All right, with that said too, when you are asking questions, please make sure that you are addressing the institution the question is for so they know who the question goes to. Once again, please do not wait until the last minute for these questions. Also, this is a webinar style type format virtual college fair, which means that you are muted and your video is turned off. The panelists cannot see or hear you, so it is super important that you go ahead and put those questions in the Q&A. Also, fun fact, the chat is disabled on your end as an attendee. You can't interact with the presenters back and forth through the chat. But fun facts about the chat is that you should definitely check it out if you see some notifications pop up, because our presenters this evening could be putting in some fantastic information like their contact info or links they want you to check out. So go ahead and check that out. Also, sign up for more sessions. Although uh, this, this is one of many college presentations offered for this evening, um, and as well as tomorrow morning, although we are out of time for this evening, uh, in terms of this being the last, uh, the last session that you're able to register for, we will have more sessions for tomorrow morning. So go ahead and sign up for those sessions in those time slots if you have time. Also, if you missed out on the fun, uh, or maybe mom missed out, maybe dad missed out, maybe a friend, Maybe you want to relive the fun for this evening. A recording will be available of the session and all sessions are actually being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com, C-A-S-D-A-N-Y. So go ahead and check those out there. Now I'd love to get started. Our first institution up is Bay Path University. Thank you so much. Hello, everybody. My name is Angelica Cruz. I'm one of the admissions counselors here at Bay Path University. Um, I'm going to be sharing a PowerPoint presentation with you all today that'll give you some more information on Bay Path University and what we have to offer. Um, again, my name is Angelica and there is my contact information in case you'd like to jot it down, in case you want to reach out to me personally. Um, so Bay Path University, we're an all women undergraduate university. Um, and this is our mission. We at Bay Path University, at Bay Path University education empowers undergraduate women and graduate women and men to become leaders in their careers and communities with an innovative approach to learning that prepares students to flourish in a constantly changing world. Um, so we do have undergraduate programs and graduate programs. Our graduate programs are co-ed, so they do allow women and men. Our undergraduate programs are all women. Um, so here are some facts about our university. So we were established in 1897. We are accredited by the New England Commission of Higher Education. We're a member of an eight college consortium with our local university universities and colleges. So that means that if you want to take a course that maybe Bay Path University does not offer, you are able to take that, that course at one of the other colleges that are part of our consortium. The total enrollment at Bay Path University is 3,300 and 700 of those are only our undergraduate students. So we are a very small campus. Because of that, we are able to give you that one-on-one -on -one personal attention and support should you need it. Our average class size is around 16, and that goes for most of your general courses, like your Englishes, your sciences, and your maths. But generally, our student-faculty ratio is 12 to 1. So for the rest of your courses, there'll be 12 students for every one professor. Our professors love getting to know our students by name. They'll get to know your personality, get to know the best way that you learn, whether that's a visual learner, a hands-on learner, and they'll try to adjust their teaching methods to ensure that you're able to grasp the material. They do not let a single one of our students fail. And the reason for that is because we are so small, we have the small classes, our professors are allowed to provide you with that additional support and attention should you need it. Um, so we're located 
in Longmeadow, Massachusetts. And these are some of the attractions near us. There's Six Flags New England, the MGM Entertainment Complex that's in downtown Springfield, the Eastern States Exposition, also known as the Big E, Basketball Hall of Fame, and the Holyoke Mall. And down at the bottom of the slide, you'll see what the distances look like between um, Longmeadow and Springfield, about 10 minutes away from Springfield, 25 minutes away from Hartford, an hour and a half away or so from Boston, and two and a half hours away from New York City. Um, and these are our majors. Um, we have over 30 plus majors um, in different fields, um, business, communications, justice, education, health sciences, liberal studies, psychology, science, and technology. Some of our most popular majors are our medical uh, science degree, which puts you on track for pre-med, pre-dental, pre-vet, pre-pharmacy, and pre-physician assistant. Our forensic psychology major is very popular as well, forensic science, justice and forensic studies, and our public safety and justice major has been pretty popular as well, along with our pre-occupational therapy studies major that is a five-year combined program. Within the first three years, you get your bachelor's degree. The last two years, you get your master's. And by the end of it all, you are a certified occupational therapist. And we did roll out a recently new program for our pre-physician assistant students. That's our pathway program. So every student that applies as a pre-physician assistant major will be reviewed to be admitted into our pathway program, which will provide you with an additional academic scholarship. It is a very rigorous program and very selective. We are only allowing up to 30 students to enter the program and the top 10 students will get direct entry into our master's in physician assistant studies program. So here are some advantages about BayPath. Like I said earlier, we're an undergraduate all-women university. So we do focus on women empowerment and women leadership through our Women as Empowered Learners and Leaders program. Under this program, you'll be assigned a well advisor, a peer mentor, and a career coach. Your career coach is going to help you with your soft skills, such as building your resume, building a cover letter. They'll provide you with free business cards should you need them, headshots, professional headshots um, if you need them, and professional-looking clothing for you to go into those interviews and they're going to be the ones who will help you find your internship. All of our programs require that an internship be completed. That's part of our hands-on learning, hands-on experience method. We want to make sure that all of our students have something on their resume by the time they graduate. And your career coach will help you find your internship, apply, they'll do interview training with you and prepare you for those interviews and they're going to keep working with you until you land the internship that you want. We do also offer accelerated options for our degrees. Uh, we do have a three-year accelerated bachelor's degree within business, education, psychology, and science programs, um, three plus one bachelor's to master's degree, and four plus one. And basically that means that, for example, a three plus one in three years you complete your bachelor's and in one year you complete your master's degree. Um, this is for currently enrolled students. So after you enroll, you wanna talk to your academic advisor and they'll put you on an educational plan to be able to accelerate your degree. So we also do have honors programs, and if you participate in our honors programs, you'll be awarded an additional academic scholarship. We have our traditional honors program, women in business honors, and women in STEM honors. We do also have athletics. We have basketball, lacrosse, cross country, soccer, softball, volleyball, and track and field. And we recently rolled out an e-gaming team. So if you are a gamer and you have an Xbox or PlayStation, you could be part of our e-gaming team. And we do tournaments throughout the year. Right now we're doing a Rocket League tournament. So for admissions at Bay Path, we just need your application, your transcript, and a minimum 2.0 GPA to be considered. Um, so that's basically about it. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to put them in the Q&A. Awesome, thank you so much. If you have any questions for Bay Path University, please put it down in the Q&A at the bottom. Next up, we have Wentworth Institute of Technology. All right, thank you and welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. My name is Pete Nelson. I'm an admissions counselor at Wentworth. I'm joined also by my coworker, Margo Gorn. She's here to answer any questions you have in the Q&A section. So I am just gonna go over, tell you a couple bit, a little bit about Wentworth. So we are, um, well, we were founded in 1904. We have 20 majors across five different schools, the School of Architecture and Design, School of Computing and Data Science, School of Engineering, School of Management, School of Science, uh, Sciences and Humanities. So we really focus in those engineering fields, design fields like architecture, uh, industrial design, interior design, computing majors like computer science, cybersecurity, CIS, computer networking. Uh, all of our programs hands-on project 
based. So you'll, as a freshman, you'll get to use over uh, you know, dozens of lab spaces, maker spaces on campus. There's an accelerate space, which is pretty cool. Um, essentially really promotes entrepreneurship and collab collaboration between majors. Uh, if you've ever seen the show Shark Tank, it's a little bit like that, where you can you go in front of a panel of uh, professionals and uh, some professors to try to pitch something to get uh, funding to go out and make it. Um, our, really the biggest draw to Wentworth, I'd say, is our co-op program. So every major requires two co-ops. You do one your junior year and you do one your senior year. And I'll throw up a slide here so I can show you about that. So the co-ops are done all over the country. Um, they're full long semesters where you get paid. So you're not in classes for those two semesters. You are just getting paid, which is great, different change. Uh, so it's a great way to get real experience. As a, so you get your hands-on experience those first two years. Uh, and then you also get real experience in your co-ops. So kind of, I'll put up this slide for a co-op. So this, Slide here, I'll show you a very small selection of our co-op companies. Uh, like I said, co-ops are done all over the country. A lot of students choose to go back home, do their co-ops back home. Um, really, when you're looking at your co for co-ops and you're working with your co-op and careers advisor, it's good to, to think about where you wanna live and work after you graduate, because there is a great chance that that company is gonna offer you a job uh, and hire you right from graduation. We are one of the colleges of the Fenway. So we're right in the Fenway area. If you've been to Boston, it's a really fun city. Um, the other schools in the colleges of the Fenway are Emanuel College, Simmons University, Mass College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences, and Mass Art and Design. So you can take classes at any of those schools. We also share some clubs, intramural, social events, kind of adds to student engagement. We're right across the street from all the museums on campus. Uh, the museums are right across the street. If you've been to Boston, it's definitely a good walking city. I need to walk to Fenway Park. I myself am also from New York, so I'm a Mets fan, but I love going down, seeing Red Sox games, or jumping on the trains. Two subway lines come to campus, makes it easy to get around, go see, I think, and now, especially since everything's coming back, sporting events and outside concerts. So it's definitely a really fun city to be in, and, and we're in a great area. Uh, also a ton of career opportunities, so for your co-ops or after you graduate. So go over the mission process real quick. So we are rolling in missions. There are two deadlines. There's December 1st deadline and February 15th deadline. You wanna to try to apply by that December 1st deadline because uh, that came with an extra thousand dollar scholarship that was over your all four years. Um, and then you wanna definitely try to apply by that February 15th deadline because that's guaranteeing a spot in your major. So we are a school where you have to apply to a major and I'll go back now that I have these slides up. So you can check out our majors again. So you, we are a school where you have to apply to a major. We don't have undecided or undeclared option. What's nice about that, you're in your classes of your major right away. So you're an engineering student in those classes right away, uh, getting you a good foundation. So when you get to your co-op semesters, you, already have, you kind of know what you're doing, right? You weren't just theoretically told, you actually got that hands-on experience in your classes to be prepared for your co-op. So back to the admissions process. So we have the, um, the application online, if you want to do that one, or we're on the Common App. To complete your application, you'd send us, you'd have your school send us your official transcripts. Uh, you'd have your, you'd send us one um, recommendation letter from a teacher or a guidance counselor. There's the essay that's part of the application. Then write any extracurriculars you could think of, part-time jobs. Um, there is an application fee, but feel free to send us an email. Be happy to send you a fee waiver code. We are test optional. We were test optional before the pandemic. I know this year specifically really hard to take SATs, ACTs, but we are test optional. Then there's an additional information section. So there I just um, recommend writing anything that whoever's reading your application might not see, whether it be like extracurriculars were canceled because of COVID and that's why I didn't do all these extracurriculars or maybe there was a dip in your grades and that you had COVID and you were out for a while. So that's a really good section to write anything that whoever's reading your application wouldn't see just from your transcript. So that will complete your application. Um, and again, we are rolling admissions. So students typically find out in three to five weeks, you'll receive um, your letter letting you know if you were admitted. And if you were admitted, you will also receive a merit scholarship. They changed the name to President's Award but that is, uh, so you'll, you'll get to know your merit scholarship 
right with your acceptance. Um, and then definitely want to fill out a, a fast bend. Um, you know, there's a lot of individualized help at Wentworth. So you have your admissions counselor, whether it be myself or Margo, you have a financial aid counselor, your co-op and careers advisor counselor. So I tell you, if you're looking at Wentworth and you really like hands-on learning and you really want to get in the field quick, working in your co-ops and, and getting into a career and being right in Boston, definitely Wentworth is a good pick for you. And thanks again for joining. Awesome, thank you so much. If you have any questions for Wentworth Institute of Technology, please put it down in the Q&A at the bottom. Next up, we have Western New England University. Good evening, everyone. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my screen real quick. And just to introduce myself, my name is Chris Weistepec. I'm the Executive Director for Admissions, Outreach and Recruitment, uh, as well as the Athletic Liaison for Western New England. Uh, I've been with the university for about 17 years. Uh, and I'm also an alumnus of Western New England. So I've been there for a while. So they really have a tough time getting rid of me. So there's a lot of information that I'm gonna be sharing within the six minutes. Um, so bear with me, I am a New Yorker myself. Um, I tend to go through things quickly, um, but just give you a little bit of background. This is information about Western New England. We're a small, medium-sized liberal arts institution. We're actually considered liberal arts and professional studies about 2,600 full-time undergraduates. Uh, we have about 3,800 total students. If you count our graduate programs, our doctorate programs, our PharmD, our School of Law, um, with the majority of our students that do live on campus. And just throw a little plug in there for Angelica, we're about 10 minutes away from Bay Path, so we're neighbors. <laughs> so, um, so we're actually in what we call in the, uh, the heart of the Pioneer Valley, which sounds a little bit corny, uh, but we're about an hour and a half away from Boston, about an hour and a half away from Albany, um, about 45 minutes away from Vermont, 30 minutes away from Hartford. So basically you can get anywhere in a day trip. Um, and just to give you a little background, these, we have five different colleges that make up the university. So we have the College of Arts and Science, the College of Business, the College of Engineering, the School of Law, and the College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences, which is where our doctorate program for our pharmacy program, as well as our occupational therapy program falls under. Um, these are the majors that we have within the College of Arts and Science, with the popular programs being psychology, criminal justice, forensic biology, forensic chemistry, health sciences, and health studies. So it seems to be the, the, uh, the most popular programs that we usually get students uh, especially around the, the New York area that have an interest in Western New England. Now with our College of Business, the most popular programs that we have are our sport management and our accounting program. As you can see from below, we are ABED accredited, which is the highest international accreditation any College of Business can receive. Um, this is the highest accreditation that any business program can get, like Harvard, Yale, MIT. They, there are examples where the only private institution in Western Massachusetts to have it, we're the only uh, one of two schools in the area that actually do have it. Um, so it goes to show you the quality of the program. And then the other big thing that I really want to touch on is SAP. Uh, SAP is a, is a program that a lot of our uh, business majors will be exposed to. It's a data analytical tool. So regardless of which business major you go into, uh, decisions are being made off of data. And companies like Brooks Brothers, Mass Mutual, uh, Unilever, these are examples of companies that ut utilize SAP. And right now, we're only one of seven schools in New England to offer uh, classes in SAP. We're the only school to actually offer certification. So it just goes to show you, show you what you're going to be working on uh, within the College of Business. And we do have an analytical center as well. So this is where students can actually use the program a little bit more in depth and about 60% of our students will graduate SAP certified. With the College of Engineer, we are a bet accredited, uh, which is the highest accreditation that a lot of, uh, that um, any College of Business can receive. I know, for example, I'm gonna uh, give Wentworth uh, the same thing as far as a lot of their programs are also a bet accredited. Um, I, we did add it a major in construction management. We do have as, as a major as well at the master's level. Um, with our College of Engineering, one of the things I do like to highlight is our most popular programs is mechanical and electrical engineering, but we have 100% internship placement rate as well as close to 100% job placement rate. And students will actually start in the engineering program uh, starting freshman year, first semester freshman year. In fact, every year you have two, uh, a couple design projects you have to work on, including starting freshman year. One of them is being a remote, con a remote control car, make sure it goes through a maze uh, with sensor and programming and so forth. And uh, it is one of our most challenging programs uh, to get into, uh, but I can tell you it's, it's definitely rewarding. Uh, and our students that have gone through the program have realized um, the success they have gone through 
uh, when they go through, whether it's biomedical, uh, the computer engineering, electrical, industrial. So it's one of our, our strongest programs that we have uh, at the university. Uh, we do offer combined degrees. For example, we have a six year engineering law program. So we are unique where we do have a school of law and the school of law is on campus. So we're only one of a couple institutions in the nation that actually has a six year engineering and law program where the only one that actually offers more than one option. So students can do mechanical engineering and law, electrical engineering and law, biomedical engineering and law, um, that's if a student has that interest. We do have the three plus three law program as well, where students can go into with uh, business or College of Arts and Science besides the engineering program. That seems to be very popular with a lot of students, especially if they're looking at real estate law, corporate law, uh, contract negotiations, uh, criminal law. And then we do have the five-year programs where we can conditionally admit a student into one of the five-year programs right out of high school. So you can go around and tell your classmates that you've been accepted into our master's program. Uh, we do have varsity sports. You can see we have 10 men's sports, uh, 10 women's sports. Uh, we do have club sports in uh, rugby and we are looking to potentially add a uh, club sport in uh, women's rugby as well. That's in the process at, as we speak. Uh, but for now, this is where we have it as well. And just to touch base real quick, uh, there's a lot to go over. Um, so we do accept the Common App as well as our own application. We do need the high school transcript average GPA about 3.6. As Peter said too, we've been a test optional institution uh, before the pandemic, so over about seven years. We do require the essay. And then just real quick, these are our uh, scholarships. So range anywhere from 11 to 22,000 plus early action scholarship, which is the deadline is November 1st. Uh, as well as Women in Business, Women in Engineering Scholarship. And then I'll put my information in the chat. So if you do have any other questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me at any point in time. Call me, email me, whatever I can do to help. Thank you. That was quick. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. If you have any questions for Western New England University, please put it down in the Q&A. Next up, we have Elizabethtown College. Hi everyone, my name is Paula Orenstein and um, I'm with Elizabethtown College. I have been with the college now 22 years. I am also the parent of a, a graduate. Um, this gives you some information um, about E-Town. Um, we have over 1600 students enrolled, 11 to one student faculty ratio. I average class size is 17. And what that affords you by attending a, a smaller college is personal attention. Um, actually, most of our classes are capped at um, 35 uh, seats, so um, your faculty are going to know who you are, and they are going to know that you're in the, in the classroom. Um, in addition to that, um, the, the size of the college on the campus is 204 acres, lots of green space um, spread out um, and located right in the middle of uh, the town of Elizabethtown. We're located in south central Pennsylvania, Lancaster County. Um, we're near Harrisburg, the state capital, and in between Harrisburg, Hershey, and Lancaster. Um, many of you might have been to Hershey already for um, Hershey Park, uh, sweetest place on earth. Uh, village of Elizabethtown has about 11,000 residents. There is an Amtrak station uh, right in town, and we are on the Pittsburgh to Philadelphia line. Harrisburg International uh, Airport is just 15 minutes from campus and students are allowed to have cars on campus, even as uh, a first year student. We are considered a residential college. Most of our students do live on campus. Um, we have seven schools within the college listed here, um, but more importantly, we have over 160 majors, minors and concentrations. Um, our our uh, most popular majors, majors are uh, found in our School of Business um, or our School of the Sciences, Biological Sciences, particularly um, uh, uh, popular. Our School of Engineering, we are ABED accredited and we have four different areas of engineering available. Also uh, that's uh, pretty popular with our students is our occupational therapy program. We have two pathways, a five-year accelerated bachelor's to master's and a six years accelerated um, bachelor's to OT doctorate. Um, one of the things that all of our students must complete before they graduate is two signature learning experiences. It could be supervised research with a faculty mentor, an internship field placement or practicum, 
cross-cultural experience, a study abroad, whether it's a short-term faculty-led trip or um, a uh, uh, an entire semester. Community-based learning, our motto is educate for service. We feel that learning is most noble when used to benefit others. So it could be a service project that involves your major, or it could be a capstone course project or development uh, portfolio usually done in your senior year. Most, um, all students will do two signature learning experiences. Many do more than two, some do all five. But this is an opportunity for when you have that first job interview or you're applying to graduate school to say, this is what I learned in the classroom and this is how I applied it to a real life experience so that you have tangible things to talk about. As I said, 85% of our students do live on campus. We guarantee housing all four years. We have a variety of residential life options. And even more importantly, when you're a junior or senior and you want that more independent lifestyle, we do have an on-campus apartment complex and an on-campus um, uh, townhouse complex. Uh, multiple dining venues, um, we, our Blue Bean Cafe does uh, sell Starbucks products. We also have a Starbucks kiosk in the library. Um, we have the Fresh Nest that serves uh, healthy options over in our sports complex. Um, and also lots of free resources for students, uh, personal counseling services, health services, career services and our learning zone that provides free tutoring and academic support to our students. Um, we have over um, 100 clubs and organizations uh, on our campus. Um, we also have 24 intercollegiate uh, athletic teams, Division Three. We also have um, athletic clubs and intramural sports. Um, our Bauer Center for Sports Fitness and Wellbeing is for every student every day and um, uh, provides students with free athletic um, uh, group sessions, group fitness sessions, um, our cardio strength and fitness area, indoor track and multiple courts. Um, and um, you can see it all listed here, but this is in the middle of the campus and is a real social hub uh, for our students. To apply, we use the common application or you can use our online application. It is free to apply. Um, you are in the driver's seat. If you complete your application early, then you will get a decision early. We get you a decision within two to three weeks, but you have until May 1st of your senior year to make your final college decision. We have multiple scholarships available, three different levels of merit-based scholarships that the admissions office awards, other scholarships, our diversity scholarship, the Mosaic scholarship. All students can audition for music performance scholarships. You do not have to be a music major or minor. And then the music uh, or the stamp scholarship is a four year um, full tuition scholarship. And we award 10 of those um, to um, students in the incoming freshman class. Our tuition is uh, for in-state and out-of-state students. We have one tuition um, and room and board um, fees. So there's no difference um, in that. We do offer an honors program. Um, you can learn more about this on our website. Uh, and uh, we do accept AP courses, uh, IB courses, and dual enrollment courses as well. Lots of opportunities to visit. Um, you just go to etown.edu slash visit. And, and this is our staff and I am the admissions counselor uh, for New York State. So thank you. And please feel free to send me any questions. Awesome, thank you so much. If you have any questions for Elizabethtown College, please put it down in the Q&A at the bottom. Next up, we have University of Connecticut. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jeremy Kraus. I'm a senior admissions officer. That's not me. With the University of Connecticut, I've been with our fair institution for nine wonderful years. About us, we were founded in 1881 as an agricultural school in the lovely town of Storrs, Connecticut. If you've never been, come visit. We're about two and a half hours away from the Capital District, two hours from New York City, an hour and a half from Boston. Uh, a half an hour outside of Hartford, 45 minutes from Worcester, Providence. Great location, ideal for finding internships, career aspirations, post-graduation. But of course, you have a 4,000-acre bucolic traditional New England College campus for you to get involved with activities, get some fresh air along the way. We have 19,000 undergrad coming from all over the world. In fact, we have students from 100 different countries and every state in this country. Our philosophy is to mimic the outside world within the confines of UConn because we are preparing you to become, that's right, beneficial members of society. 
out of those 19,000 students, uh, one third come from uh, out of state. Uh, and of course, we also have an international contingency on campus. Uh, our main campus is in stores, of course, but we do have regional campuses. Uh, some of them have specialties like our Avery Point campus, renowned for marine science. Our Stanford campus, uh, which is right outside New York City, is renowned for some of their business programs. And of course, our newest regional campus, my basement. Just kidding, but that's where I'm working right now. Academically, we have 115 majors in nine different schools and colleges, everything from allied health sciences to women's studies and everything in between. We have our own school of fine arts, our own school of engineering, our own school of nursing, our own college of liberal arts and sciences. We have one of the oldest uh, pharmacy schools in the country. Again, a lot of opportunities. Of course, experiential opportunities are abundant at the university. We really do want you engaged every minute of the day. We have an award-winning honors program, a thriving study abroad program. We go to over 150 countries. And of course, we have our own honors program on campus. Of course, we do want you involved outside of the classroom. In, in addition to our experiential opportunities, we have over 750 clubs and organizations, everything from acapella to yoga, all things in between. Perhaps you're also interested in doing community service. Good news, that's actually part of our mission. Our students did 1.2 million hours of it last year alone. Of course, sports pretty popular at the University of Connecticut, something about basketball. Maybe you saw us on television over the weekend. I know the men, not so good. Women, going strong, looking for title number 12 in the last 18 years. Who's counting? We are, of course. Division one, we're also a research one. We've got 22 world-class athletics. If you're not cut out for D1, that's okay. We've got 40 club teams. You still go all over the country competing against other larger universities. And if that's not your thing, we have over 100 intramural sports on campus. Compete against your fellow Huskies. Uh, we do have Greek life. About 15% of our student body go Greek. It's not go Greek or go home at UConn. In fact, uh, you won't go home if you attend the University of Connecticut, not because we hold you hostage, but because our students do not leave on the weekends. The majority of our students do live on campus and indeed our population swells on the weekend. We have 108 different resident uh, halls. We have 30 different living learning communities. For those of you that are not familiar, these are shared living environments where you live amongst your peers collaborate outside the classroom. Again, uh, making the most out of your college experience. We've got ones that are academically derived like our pharmacy house and our nursing house and our business house. But then we have ones that are academically derived like our women in math, science and engineering house, otherwise known as whimsy. I like saying it, so I'm gonna mention it. Again, these are all optional opportunities except for one that is our honors house. If you are in our honors program, you have to live there. Again, that's to your advantage. Of course, we do have financial aid at the University of Connecticut made up of grants, scholarships, federal work study. If you need to work while attending the University of Connecticut, we only have 8,000 jobs on campus. I'm not exaggerating. Everything from working in one of our eight dining halls to our world-class library, or if you're really lucky, you can find yourself working in the admissions office and see me all the time. Not bad. Our School of Engineering and our School of Business have their own dedicated career service center, but in all honesty, that's how we measure our success as an institution. Last count, we only had 240,000 alumni working all over the world. No big deal. It's just the reputation of UConn that will precede you forever. As far as admissions go, we are holistic, but we are also selective. This year, we did receive 38,000 applications for 3,700 seats at stores, our main campus. We read every single one of those applications and we review them holistically. We were test optional last year. We will be test optional this year and then the year after that. However, as far as admissions requirements go, those will be determined, of course, in August. My best advice to all of you out there that are listening and taking notes, do the best that you can and be sincere. Unless any of you have a time machine and go back and retake ninth grade, uh, it's done. What's done is done. But uh, do definitely ask lots of good questions and uh, definitely uh, search around. You'll find the right fit, I can assure you. Again, my name is Jeremy Krause. Let me put my information in the chat. I know I was short and sweet, but I'll let you uh, empower yourselves. Check out our website, uconn.edu. Go Huskies. Awesome, thank you so much. If you have any questions for University of Connecticut, please put it in the Q&A down at the bottom. Next up we have University of New Haven. Hi everyone, my name is Tanika Mills. I'm going to share a quick presentation with you. Um, just to go briefly about our university, we are located in West Haven, Connecticut, which is a small town, um, not far too much outside of New Haven, Connecticut. 
Um, we're not too far from New York City. We're not too far from Boston. And we are um, only five miles away from downtown New Haven, which your New Haven is located. We are only 5,000 undergrad, which means we are small school, maybe set, maybe we can say medium size since we are growing. We only have 22 students, class size 16 to one student to teacher ratio. We have over 100 plus clubs, and we have over 100 plus majors and programs here at the university. We have five different colleges that students can choose from depending on what major they are entering into. Um, they don't have to reapply into these colleges. They're simply directly placed into them upon acceptance. 97% of students who do graduate from our university are placed into a job of their um, interests right after graduation. So right, not, not necessarily right after, but about a year. So that's really great to remember since we are a very small school inside of Connecticut. Um, we have 200 plus clubs and organizations. So what we say here is board is not an option. Um, so students can be very involved academically, um, you know, socially, however which way they want to. These are some different clubs and organizations just to show that board is not an option here at the university. Um, we also have a study abroad option. We do have a Prado campus located remotely in um, Prado, Italy. Um, right now, of course, with COVID, students are doing these things virtually, but hopefully when things do open up, we can reopen up our campus out there. Um, we are division two athletics. These are some athletic sports that we have for our students, which is 17 varsity. Um, teams that we offer. We have different scholarships. So we have three academic scholarships ranging from 10,000 to 26,000. We also have additional scholarships, which there's an honor scholarship, marching band, Pompeii scholarship, which is directly for, for business students and portfolio scholarship for students interested in the arts. Um, right now we are hosting on campus and virtual visit opportunities for our students. We do have an open house coming up April 18th. So I will put a link for you to register if you're interested in coming to that. But if you have any questions and comments, I hope I didn't speed through it too fast. Please put them in the chat. I will send more information about our university just so that you have it. And there you have it. Awesome. Thank you all so, so much. Really appreciate it. We do have a few extra minutes. Um, so I would love to invite our uh, wonderful presenters back uh, on screen videos on. That would be fantastic because I have a quick question for you all. Um, give me one second. I'll share my screen here. Let's see if this works. Yep, there we go. All right. So I have a quick question for you all. We do have a few extra minutes, so uh, let's keep it kind of brief. If we can get through all of uh, us this evening, that would be fantastic. We're just gonna go in presentation order. The question is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? So Bay Path University, you're first. Thank you. Uh, the advice that I would give someone going through the college search process is to see the campus uh, of the institution that you're interested in, whether that's virtually in person. Um, try to see if you can meet with current students at the institution because they are going to give you their honest answer of what their experience has been attending that college or university. Um, and also try to meet with faculty uh, that are involved within the program that you're interested in because they can give you more information on the curriculum what to expect and whether or not that program is right for you. Awesome, thank you. Wentworth Institute of Technology? Yeah, definitely agreed. Uh, best people to talk to is current students if you get a chance and, and you'll definitely wanna um, start visiting campuses. Hopefully more of them open soon. Wentworth is open right now. They're small, five people to each tour. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of schools out there. So I was just kind of rounded down like you've been doing, wondering about like, small schools or bigger schools, cities or rural campuses. I'll definitely help you round it down and then try to go visit the small number of schools that you, that you really feel like you matched with. Awesome, thank you. Western New England University. So the one advice I have to say, especially during these times is communication, all right? Communication is gonna be more important than ever before. And what I mean is not only with your school counselors within your high school, but every single one of us. I mean, we all know each other. Like when Peter came on, I was like, hey, Peter, I haven't seen you in about a year and a half. It's like, we all know each other and we all are here to serve your best interests. Like we're all here 
to try to figure out what is the best fit. And there's times when we do recommend, you know what, maybe we might not be the best fit, but maybe talk to Jeremy or maybe talk to Angelica. Like we're here to figure out what is the best fit and communication and showing us that you're interested, whether it's by email, whether it's by phone call, whether by text messaging, that's gonna really make a difference. And our goal is to really try to figure out what can we do to help you? What can we do to figure out how can we get you into the, our college and university? So do not be afraid to reach out of us. We all put our contact information in the chat for a reason. It's not because we don't want to talk to you because we really want to have that conversation. All right. So don't be afraid to reach out to us with any question. There is no stupid question involved. Um, just have that open line of communication. Let us figure out what we can do to figure out and let you know about the opportunities that we have at each institution. Awesome. Elizabeth Town College. Uh, I just have one um, uh, thing to add to what Chris says is check your email. Um, that is probably the best way colleges are going to um, reach out to you. Um, you don't want to be called on the phone at night. We don't want to be calling you on the phone at night. Um, you know, unless you've called us and, and we need to get in, in, in touch with you um, and that's the best time for you. But um, check your email because if there's something I want you to know, um, I'm going to shoot you an email. Awesome, thank you. University of Connecticut. Great, what else can I add? Uh, my, my peers have done such an eloquent job explaining communication, research, due diligence. I'll underline those three things. And again, just reiterate, it's all about finding the right fit. Ask yourself, will you look good in blue? Awesome, University of New Haven. Um, I can also agree with everything that everybody has said. Um, it's really about how you feel on that campus. So it is really a great idea to go visit that campus, see how you feel, um, see if, it, you know, if it's really fit for you. Um, like other people said, communication is key. Um, checking your email is very key, as well as the spam box, because a lot of our emails have been jumping into people's spam. So you should click check both of them, um, because we really do want to get in contact with you guys and, you know, help you all with any questions that you have. Awesome. Thank you all so, so much. Really appreciate that. I know I learned a thing or two, so I'm sure our attendees have as well. And I hope that they were taking notes. Um, with that said, we are at the end of the 45 minute session. I told you all that, you know, time flies when you're having fun. And we had a great time this evening. Thank you to our uh, institutions for being here. Thank you so much presenters. You were fantastic. You shared some absolutely amazing information about your uh, institutions and attendees. Thank you for joining. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for attending and getting that awesome information from these institutions as well. Um, before I let you all go super quickly, I have some quick announcements. Uh, after you close out this window, my attendees, the words very quick are literally in the middle of your screen. So there will be a very quick four question survey that will appear. Just please give us some feedback. We appreciate it. Sign up for more sessions. There are no longer more sessions for this evening, but will be uh, more sessions for tomorrow morning at some point. So please make sure you register for those time slots. And also remember, if you missed out on some of the fun, maybe, you know, mom wants to check it out, grandma, your friend, whoever it is, a recording will be available at that link that you see in uh, on the screen right now, strivescan.com backslash C-A-S-D-A-N-Y. So once again, check out those recordings of all sessions. With that said, you all, it's been fun. Thank you again so, so much. I hope everyone has a safe and warm night. See you all later. Bye. <laughs>